Hey, right over there, folks. There he is. That's Stephen Kravitz. Guy we love to talk to. You're so much fun, and you're so good to talk to, and we have a nice conversation and so on. I was just, I was just thinking. I was, uh, I was uh, watching Letterman on YouTube, and uh-huh. a, a couple of times that he was able on Stupid Petrix to have a talking dog. Right. You know, one said Obama, and the other one, oh, really? the other one said I love you, and very, you could hear him say it. He, I love you, you know. So, and it reminded me of uh, the the classic joke. I think. Let me let me get rid of something here. The classic joke, I do believe, uh, if we're going to talk about classic jokes, I have to get all this stuff out of the way of the... Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, the, the classic joke, I think, always is a guy walks into a bar with a talking dog. Right? Okay. Talking dog jokes. Do you know any talking dog jokes? No. You want to hear the best talking dog joke I ever heard? Lay it on me. Guy walks into a bar. He says to the bartender, will you give me a free drink if my dog can talk? He says, your dog can talk? He says, uh, yeah, my dog can talk. Uh, and uh, he says, okay, make your dog talk. And the dog says, okay, uh, um, uh, uh, who's the current president of the United States? And the dog goes, Joe Biden. He says, that's amazing, your dog can talk? He says, yeah, the dog can talk. He says, would you do me a favor? He says, here's 20 bucks. Have the dog go over to my competitor across the street. Okay. And have him go in and order a drink. And then after he drinks the drink, say, this drink stinks. Okay. okay. So the guy says, "Okay." So he gives the dog. He gives the dog the twenty bucks so the dog can buy the drinks. Right. Right. Dog puts it in his mouth. Walking across the street, the dog doesn't come back. They don't understand what's happening. He goes out to the middle of the street, and there, in the middle of the street, is his dog humping another dog. And he yells out to the dog, why are you doing that? And the dog yells back, well, I never had 20 bucks before. Good night. The other one, the classic one, is when he goes into a bar and he says, uh, what, what's on the top of a building? And the dog goes, Ruth. And he says, who's the greatest baseball player of all time? He goes, Ruth. And finally the bartender throws them both out on the street and the dog looks at the guy and goes, what it was DiMaggio? You know, but you don't know you don't know any talking dog jokes? No. Do you know any jokes? Because I'm I'm very bad at jokes. I, I once somebody can tell me a joke and then I'll go tell it to somebody else and then it disappears from my mind. Right. You know that I, like, I do not know any any jokes. You don't know any. You don't know any per se jokes. Wow. See, I mean, two, you, two, two, two Jews walk into a bar. Yeah. And they buy it. Yes, I know that. I was gonna say that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's it. That's that's uh, the. That's my entire repertoire. Of jokes. Of now, jokes. Well, we could say you make up your own jokes. Pardon me. You make up your own jokes. Yeah. But in your case, I mean, if I remember your act correctly, and I think I do, and I have a copy of it here, actually, when you were at one of my shows. Really? Yeah, I should put it up and stuff sometime so people can see it. Uh, It is up somewhere. I don't know where you go for it. But anyway, uh, if you go to Gabnet uh, TV, it's there. Okay. Really? Yeah. Uh, Anyway, on on Roku. Uh, uh, the, The fact of the matter is... You don't tell jokes as much as you do a routine. Right. I tell a story. You tell a story, yeah. Right. Uh, and and I, I think some, you know, a lot of comedians today don't tell jokes. You know who told jokes? Henny Youngman told jokes. Right. You, you know, uh, they go up on stage and they do one joke after another. Right. Uh, I'm trying to think. Who, we had a modern version of that in uh, in what's his name? Uh, 
Oh, God, I'm trying to think which comedian it was. Who just told jokes? It was one joke unrelated to the joke before it. Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright is one of them. Stephen Wright was traditional that way. He told jokes. And uh, Rodney Dangerfield oh, yeah. told jokes. Right. You know, in other words, it was one joke after another. It wasn't one thread of something like, well, you know, the right. funny thing about eating dinner out, and then you right. do a bunch of dinner out stuff material. Right. But the traditional telling a joke. And uh, Honey, Henny, I don't know how a guy like Henny Youngman remembered that many jokes. Okay. And especially, didn't he borrow jokes? No, Burl stole jokes. Oh, there you go. Burl That's did. Right. But um, uh, Milton Berle, folks, and for those of you who are too old to remember that sort of thing, Milton Berle uh, used to do that. But Henny Young wasn't a very good comic. I didn't never thought he was terribly funny. I thought what made him funny is he was so bad. Right. You know? And, right. And so after a while, he became a national treasure because he was so bad, not because he was so good. Right. And then his, his wife died. And his big line always was, take my wife, please. Right, and right. And he, he kept using it. Hey, I'm in show business. Fuck it. It's a good piece of material. I'm going to use it. Right. I asked uh, Slayton when his wife died, uh, did he get rid of all the wife material? And he said he kind of started to get rid of it, but he couldn't get rid of it completely because it was a big part of his act. Right. Yeah, my wife does this. My wife says that. Bah, 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 right. bah, bah. So it rather, he just would do the material rather than go up on stage and say, "Well, my wife died, but let me tell you about her while she was still alive." Right, yeah. right, right, right. That right. would kill the crowd. Yeah, opening up with "My wife died," probably not a good start. <laughs> Bring my wife back, please. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't seem to work. Uh, so, uh, how, how is that up there? It, you know what it is down here? We're getting, my eyes are burning. Been burning the last couple of days. They burn all the time, but they're burning more than usual. You know what from? From the what? The California fires. Are you serious? All that smoke has gotten out here and is permeating Manhattan. I can look out really? my window and there is a haze of smoke. That's how bad the wildfires are out in California. The whole West Coast. Yeah. Are you getting it up there? Are they saying you're getting it up there? No. No. He's up in Massachusetts, folks. No. Yeah, no. Okay. How's life going for you in Massachusetts? It's okay. It's okay. What, what you know do, what I mean? You, you seem to have your reservations. I mean, would you rather be in San Francisco? Oh, yes. Okay, why? Uh, San Francisco is such a great city. They say it isn't anymore. Yeah, they say it's horrible. They say it's pretty horrible now. And, right. and I mean, Bubbles, when I talk to him, always says to me, well, you, you wouldn't recognize it now. You wouldn't like what you see. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's that bad. So, uh, you know, you got homeless people in the, uh, sleeping in the streets. Uh, right. you, you know, you've got you got the COVID thing hit there pretty hard, uh, although it got better. But they just say, and it's terribly expensive to live there because Very all expensive. well, all the people came up from uh, Silicon Valley, right? Because all the companies moved their offices out of Sil. Well, they had them still in Silicon Valley, but they had satellites in San Francisco. You remember where okay. we used to do our radio show in the right. Furniture Mart, that building. Remember this terrible studio we had, the old one, right. this really small one. That's now uh, Twitter. That whole yeah, building, right. that whole building is Twitter. So you get like uh, you know a couple of thousand people moving up from the South Bay, maybe ten thousand, to work at Twitter, right. and they're going to look for apartments. And those people have a lot of money. Right. 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 So, so, so the landlords see them coming and they raise the rents. So now to get right. an apartment, and, you know, I used to pay, uh, what was it? I used to pay about, originally in the marina, I paid about 800 bucks a month. Right. When, I, when I finally left, it was like up to 1000 for one of my apartments and 1600 for the other. Okay. Today, that'd be $8,000. 
Oh, yeah. You know, so, I mean, you couldn't afford to live in San Francisco. No. Yeah. No. And neither no. could I, you know. I couldn't afford to live in New York. Uh, well, you know, we still have a problem with this apartment. Who knows? I mean, we may, we, we haven't been paying rent for eight years. If they ever try to collect it, we're out of here. We can't afford right. it. You know, uh, they they won't, I'm sure. Uh, right. But uh, it's, it's, you know, it's still a possibility. And we think about it and we go, and then how do we move all this stuff out? We probably just leave it and say, fuck it. You know. Right, 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 right. We're going to have a lot of electronic equipment. Um so, you know, I mean, it, it, it really is, uh, uh, but it, it, if we had to move, I don't think we could move back into New York City. Right. You know, Mar Marjorie, but we have to kind of, because Marjorie's still working. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah. And we'd have to use her income as proof that we were capable of paying rent. Right. You know, our, right, com right, our right. combined incomes are okay, you know. Right. But I mean... It's just where do we move? You know, and do we want to move? Do we want to stay here? Does she want to leave there, sell her place, get a little place upstate? You know, right? And live as hermits. So, and I don't know if I want to do that. That doesn't sound. You know, I would love to live in the country. You know, God, you're a city boy. Not really. I'll tell you. Uh, whenever I was in any way in the country, I loved it. I just, I just love the, the casualness of it all. I could live without a city. I'm not, I, I don't take advantage of the city. What do I do here? You know, right. I, for a year and, and a quarter, I never even left the apartment for crying out loud. Really? Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, very rarely did I ever go out. I went out for emergencies. I went out, let's see here. Uh, COVID didn't hit till right after my last cancer procedure. Okay. okay, which I was very lucky because if I had waited a week, I wouldn't have been able to get it right. for a year. So uh, I got it, and and uh, then after that, everything shut down. Well, as my father used to say, it shut up tighter than a cow's ass at fly time. I never knew what that meant, but it seemed <laughs> like a funny term. Yeah, uh, and it was that way. It was terrible here. And uh, I just never went out. So I never took advantage of the city. And now that I do go out, I really, I take a walk down to the Harlem Mirror here and back, and that's it. You know, I don't even, if I don't have to, I don't even go below 110th Street. You know, so uh, it's, uh, I don't know that I take advantage of New York any longer. Right. I don't know that I would, I would miss it. I think every night when I went to sleep and I heard crickets instead of kids blowing fireworks up, right. uh, I think I might say this is the nice life here. You know, so who knows? It's pretty quiet where you are, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So you're no you you're used to the quiet. Yes. In fact, I mean, I grew I grew up here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I grew up here. Now, now I'm I'm back. Is your family happy to have you there? Most of the time. Most of the, what do you mean most of the time? I don't know about all the time. Yeah, yeah. So. So what do you got, uh, cousins and you have brothers and sisters? I got brothers, no you got, sisters. You got brothers, oh boy. Yeah. Uh, were, you, were you the youngest? Middle. Middle, oh. So what's it like, they say, they say that uh, destiny is the order in which you're born. That the, that the oldest uh, always has a certain personality, the middle has a certain personality, and the youngest has a certain personality. And it's okay. all dictated by birth order. Well, I have one older brother and one younger brother. Okay. Now, my, my older brother mm -hmm. is the golden child. He's the golden child? How do you, what do you mean by golden child? Well, they lost two before he survived. Oh, they lost two before he survived. Right. So he and he's also the firstborn, and he's firstborn male. So he's the golden child. Got to be because they go, hey, we lost two, and now this one survived. God right. bless him. But they managed. Come, what's what's in, like, What's interesting is they lost two, then right. they finally 
had one that took, and then they did it twice again. Yeah. But I'm like 15 months behind my older brother, almost like an afterthought. It, you know. In other words, it, in other words, they had babies. Boom, boom, boom. Well, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, well, fifteen yeah. months is a, is a, is pretty close to the first one. Right, right, wait, right. Wait, and, wait. and then my see now my younger brother is three years. You're you're younger. Oh, you have a younger brother. Yeah, you're the middle brother. Okay, right, right. right. Okay. So he's the baby. Okay. And then there's the golden child and the baby, and then there's me. You. You, you know. So I learned that negative attention was still attention. I see. And it was intense and it was immediate. Do you so, think do you think that was any reason why you became a comedian? Because you craved attention? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I never thought about that. You know what I mean? But I do like to also very much engage with the audience. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I like to not only tell stories, but I like to play with the audience. Well, well, did you find as a middle child, in order to get attention, you had to do something like performing? You had to kind of get their attention through some kind of action, as it were? Yes. Yes. And how would that play itself out? Well, let's say I did something bad, and my mom would say, go stand in the corner. And I would say, no. <laughs> and she'd say, go stand in the corner. And I'd say, no. So she'd go and she'd empty out the waste paper basket, clean it out, pick me up, and put me in it and say, no, stay in the corner. <laughs> That's not exactly child abuse, is it? No. No, not child abuse at all. Uh, <laughs> now, when she threw shoes... Here's something I learned yeah. when I was a teenager. Okay. And when she would hit me, which was very rarely, but on special occasions, it, it, it didn't hurt anymore. You know, I was like 15 and she would hit me and it was like, it didn't hurt. So never laugh at somebody who is hitting you. Oh, I see, okay. You see, because she snapped and she threw every shoe in the house at me <laughs> and she bit my arm. Wow, you must have been a bad kid. Or I guess I needed a lot of attention. Well, no, an infuriating kid. Oh, so you, but you do think that the reason, like when you, let's say she would make you stand in the corner and she would put you in a wastebasket or she would do any of those things. Did you feel satisfied by that? Because she was paying attention? God, I feel like a shrink here. God. Yeah, I feel like I'm being psychoanalyzed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, I, I, you know, I don't know. Also, my mother passed away when I was pretty, I was, I was still a teenager. Wow. She was only uh, 47. Hmm. What'd she die of? Uh, cancer. At 47? Right. Oh, God. Well, that's got to be devastating to you. Yes. Because I'm sure that in spite of the fact that she spanked you and put you in a garbage can, uh, you <laughs> still it sounds like you still loved her. Oh, very much. Yeah, yeah. Very much. My parents, I'm trying to think of the way they, they when I was bad, what, what they would do. My father never would hit me. He didn't no. believe in that. Didn't believe it. No. Never spanked me. Uh, you know what it was? My father was German. And when he got mad, he had this very loud voice. Really? And it scared the shit out of me. You know? See, my father and, would just stare at me. But he would yell at me. And, uh, you know, Bolo, because that was my nickname. Bolo, don't do that. You know? Right. And I would pay attention to that. That was, that was as bad as a spanking, for crying out loud. You know? My my dad never ever ever laid a hand on us. But what we did is, me and my younger brother shared a room growing up, mm -hmm. and you know how kids are. Sometimes they make noise. Yeah. And 
it would wake him up and he'd have to, you know, get up early for, to go to work. So what he'd do is he'd open up the door, mm-hmm. take off his belt, right? Yeah. Fold it in half and snap it. You know how you snap a belt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And then hang it on the doorknob. <laughs> and go back to his room. Wow. Wow. Now, and it worked every time. Well, you know, I mean, I think the reason why I especially didn't like my father yelling at me was that I didn't want, I love my father a lot. And right. I didn't want his disapproval. I mean, right. di- dis- and I think if you're a good parent, you don't have to spank a kid. You just have to put that kid in fear of your disapproval. In other right. words, I got him. I always have stuff getting in the way of the picture here. My cursor was there. Uh, uh, you know, you get this this, this uh, feeling that, that the best way to, to, to raise a kid is by making them respect you enough that they don't want your disapproval. Right. That that's the worst thing that can happen. You right. Know, and I lost my father. I was pretty young. I was in my 20s when he went. Right. He went at uh, 59. You know. So I'm sitting here at 81 going, God. You know, well, I, Alex, one side of my family dies very young. Yeah. Like my mother's father died when she was two. My mother's mother died when she was 10. My mother died when she was 47. My nephew died when he was 22. Right? Wow. What did that's he die? One side, that's one what did, he, what did he die of? He had a heart attack in his sleep. At 22? Yeah. Boy, he must have been doing a lot of coke. No, <laughs> Jeez. They did a, they did a, that's what I thought, but they did a talk screen and it was completely clean. No, oh, God. So one side of my family dies very young. Yeah. The other side of the family just won't fucking die. Yeah. I mean, my grandparents were married 81 years. She died, she was 104. Oh, God. He died at 102. My father died at 92. So, like I said, one side of the family dies very young. Yeah. One side of the family just won't fucking die. I, I, I remember something about you, and it's vague, so you're going to have to fill me in, but you always seem to be, uh, always thought a lot about your mother dying young. I think there was something yeah. about a tombstone that had to be put up or something. That's when I, when I was a finalist in the comedy competition in 85, me and my brothers pitched in and put a headstone on a grave. And the reason we, and it was so important is I was back there one winter and she only had a plaque and there was a lot of snow on the ground and I couldn't find her grave and I kind of freaked out. Yeah. So that's when we made a pact, we would, we would put a headstone on the grave. You know how bad a son I am? I haven't, put, I haven't put a tombstone up on my mother's grave yet. Really? Yeah. I've talked to a lot of people, and they say they haven't either. You know? Right. Uh, uh, because they feel that tombstones are unnecessary. That it's it's basically garish. Right. It, you know, it, it it's a pronouncement, here lies so-and-so. Well, what's lying there? A bunch of bones. And right. Decaying and flesh and so on. Uh, that uh, you know, Marjorie, my wife says she wants to cremate me. I want to be cremated. And I, I don't. Well, how do you know? I mean, if there is an afterlife, and you get up there, and you're just a pile of ashes. I mean, what are they going to say? I'm sorry, we can't do anything with you here. If you, if you at least came here in one piece. <laughs> I don't think it works like that. Yeah. Well, I, uh, yeah, I really don't know. And uh, who knows, is there an afterlife? Well, we can discuss that on another occasion because we're slowly running out of time here. Really? Uh, but, uh, yeah, I talk with you and it just goes on and on and on. And I, I don't do this long in time with anybody. In fact, last week, I decided not to run my show. I just put your interview up and it right. got more viewers than any of my shows. Really? Yes. So I may just put this one up by itself as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So. How do you like that? How do you like that? Uh, anyway. Maybe, maybe we could call this the Cretching Hour. Uh, well, no, I mean, he, he, we learned a lot about you today. You yeah. Know? And and it's all because we just get, get conversant and talk and right. so on, you know. 
Right, and, uh, right, 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 yeah. right. I, I, I was the oldest child in my family. I was also oh, the, really? I was also the youngest and the middle child. You're an only child. Nah, I was an only child, which yeah. my, my wife hates. She always goes, "You're an only child. You're spoiled." Right. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Are you jealous of that fact? Right. You know, does that bother you that I was an how only many, child? How many siblings does she have? She had two. I, I, I think she has a brother. That I know. Right. Uh, and uh, I don't think she's ever mentioned anybody else. But I'll, I'll have to ask her. I didn't ask. That's how much I care about other people. You know. Right. I mean, I'm living right. with somebody, and I don't know how many. But you know, I do know her brother because he's been here. He's come to see her. So right. I, you know, I know she has a brother. You know. Right. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. Hi. This is this is so much fun, and and neither of us have anything to do this time of the day anyway. So no, not really. Any important things you're going to do today? I think there's a nap in my future. See, that's what I'm talking about. Anyway, it's called the new segment is now called Getting Older with Steve Kravitz. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Thank you, Alex. We'll see you Thanks, next folks. time. Bye bye.